It was a day for the record books in the Caribbean. Hurricane Melissa, formerly a strong Category 5 storm, departs Jamaica and makes the crossing towards Cuba. There has been extensive damage across Jamaica yesterday and today, not only due to wind but extreme rainfall, and now Cuba and the Bahamas are bracing for significant impacts tonight and Wednesday. Hurricane Melissa was a record-breaking storm which reached 185 miles an hour, one of the highest one-minute speeds ever observed in the North Atlantic. That's just shy of the 190 set by Hurricane Allen in 1980 and equals the 185 reading set by several famous storms, the Labor Day Hurricane of 1935, Hurricane Gilbert in 1988, Wilma in 2005, and Dorian in 2019. The central pressure of 892 was only exceeded by a few storms, Wilma, Labor Day, and Hurricane Gilbert, so this is definitely a top five event. We also had the strongest Atlantic modern-day landfall on record, tying the 1935 Labor Day storm, as all other storms, including Allen, reached their highest intensities out at sea. At 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Melissa had dropped to 125 miles an hour. That's a high-end Category 3 and the pressure had risen significantly to 950 millibars. The center of the eye made landfall in Jamaica at 17Z or 1 p.m. Eastern Time near the town of White House and exited around 5 p.m. near Martha Bray. The eye filled in as it crossed Jamaica and it was difficult to locate. The storm characteristics as it exits are not very well known and a Hurricane Hunter WP-3 is arriving on station as we record this. One very fortunate aspect of this storm is the compact size and the limited wind radius. The eye was as low as 10 miles in diameter, with a radius of hurricane force winds in the northeast quadrant of about 50 miles. In the capital city of Kingston, which is 75 miles east of the track, the METAR observations showed a sustained wind maxing out at 41 knots and a max gust of 51. Anyway, at this time, we're looking at a Category 4 storm heading for southern Cuba. And of course, given the state of the economy there, a lot of subsistence farming, they're even more vulnerable to storm damage. The U.S. Guantanamo Bay facility is about 75 miles west of the forecast track, so the effects there will be similar to that at Kingston. That base is fairly well protected for tropical storms, although I've heard they've restricted the base to essential personnel only. Landfall will be in a fairly remote area about 50 miles west of Santiago de Cuba, near Uvero, as a Category 4 storm. The storm will move about 20 miles east of Hoguin and depart the coast near Guadalavaca, still at Category 3, so there could be severe damage all through eastern Cuba along that track. The storm will then cross the southern Bahamas tomorrow afternoon and move out to sea. And there's a chance it could reach Bermuda Thursday night as a Category 2 storm, but that should not be a major impact for them. Across the U.S. this evening, we've got a powerful weather front moving through Arkansas, the Ozarks, and southeast Texas. In the wake of that front, very strong gusty winds all the way from the Dakotas down into south Texas. We have freeze warnings and watches all through the panhandles into eastern New Mexico, and this will be a multi-day event. Heavy rains and strong winds continue to affect the mid-Atlantic coast due to the strong pressure gradient between a 1030 millibar high in Quebec and this coastal low east of North Carolina. The upper-level charts at 250 millibars this evening showed a cutoff high in Quebec with a cutoff flow across New York. This forms a Rex block. We have a deep trough moving through the central U.S. associated with that strong cold advection and ridging through the Pacific Northwest, although another Pacific trough is moving inland and another one is found south of the Aleutians. At 500 millibars within that strong cold air advection zone in the central U.S., an upper level low had formed over Kansas. This will merge with that cutoff low in New York, and the cutoff high in Quebec will be displaced eastward. 
This forms a large long-wave trough across the eastern U.S. This next upstream system will descend into the base of that trough, and this will create a period of very troughy weather through the eastern half of the country. Meanwhile, out west, ridging, this is a positive PNA pattern with that deep Aleutian low ridging in the western part of North America and troughing out east. An atmospheric river extending into British Columbia and possibly Washington towards the weekend. And we see this upper level ridge move across the central plains on Sunday. And then going into next week, we see a very active progressive pattern through much of the country, cutoff low in the southeastern U.S and a series of waves moving into the northern U.S. into this area of troughiness in the eastern states. Across the northeastern states today, we saw highs in the 50s just about everywhere, including the Great Lakes, a few 40s in the higher elevations of the Blue Ridge Mountains. There's a freeze warning tonight for northwestern New York between Syracuse and Buffalo. Temperatures will drop into the upper 20s in that area of surface ridging. The Lake Ontario shores should remain above freezing. Coastal flood advisories and warnings continue from North Carolina to New Jersey, with wind advisories on the Virginia coast for northeast winds gusting to 50 miles an hour this evening. In the southeastern states, a ridge extended down the Appalachians. We had northerly flow to the east of that ridge and southeasterly flow to the west ahead of this system coming out of the plains. Cool conditions continued in the Carolinas with 50s for highs, 60s across the deep south, 70s in northern Florida, and 80s in the Florida Peninsula ahead of the cold front. North Carolina remains under coastal flood advisories with gale warnings until 2 a.m. and a number of rivers in northeastern Florida remain under flood advisories due to recent rains. A cold front surged southward through Texas today. We're looking at the first big freeze of the year affecting western Oklahoma and parts of west Texas. And there on the surface plot, you can see that brisk northerly flow down to 58 at Oklahoma City. Most stations getting gusts up near 30 knots. Those should subside a little bit tonight. Numerous storms had developed along and ahead of the cold front. Those stretch from northern Louisiana to the Texas Gulf Coast, and there is a slight risk for severe in western Louisiana and far southeastern Texas. A few of those cells may contain tornadic activity. In the northern plains, we saw cold advection surging through the Dakotas into Nebraska and Kansas. Highs were in the 50s just about everywhere, with 40s in northeastern and central Minnesota. And we saw very cold 30s and 40s throughout the northern and central Rockies. Denver was looking for a high of 47. Wind advisories for that strong cold front have been posted all across eastern Kansas, up to Omaha, Lincoln, Sioux City. North winds will be gusting to 50 miles an hour, and this certainly has the look of a very potent cold advection regime. Further west, freeze warnings are in effect for all of the Goodland, Kansas area and the Fort Collins, Boulder, Denver area and down near Florence, near Royal Gorge. And we can see the center of that cold air mass extending from the Dakotas all the way down to eastern Colorado. Some very impressive thermal troughing, although the temperatures are not terribly cold. This is suggestive of great depth of that cold air. And looking at the forecast soundings within that trough, we see extensive depth of that cold air. At 700 millibars, it was minus 12 Celsius, and it gets much colder with height. The cold air mass has considerable extent across the central Rockies and the Great Basin area. The leading edge of that cold front extends all the way into Arizona and the California deserts. And towards the very end of that loop, you can see fires there in the Mogollon Rim with those plumes pointing straight to the south. We had a wide range of temperatures in the southwestern U.S., 40s and 50s in the central Rockies and 90s in the lower deserts. And reflecting on that surface map, we do see the makings of a Santa Ana type pattern. 1028 millibars in northeastern Nevada. 
10-14 millibars in the Los Angeles area and winds out of the north through the California and Nevada deserts. At the present time, the winds are not very strong, although in the mountains north of Los Angeles, Sandberg is reporting gusts to 28 knots. In the Pacific Northwest, it was a cool day with highs in the 50s. We did see some 60s in southwestern Oregon. Portland was 58 with 55 at Seattle. Puget Sound is under a gale warning overnight for southeast winds gusting to 45 miles an hour as this new weather system approaches the coast. And we see it reflected on the surface chart with an occlusion moving across Vancouver Island. The triple point is about 200 miles west of Portland. Wind warnings cover all of the British Columbia coast except for the Vancouver area. Southeast winds will gust 55 to 70 miles an hour. The strongest wind gusts will be near Bella Bella and Haida Gwaii. No major problems in Alaska. The Gulf of Alaska and the Bering Sea remain stormy, and we have gale warnings all through this area. Gale warnings will be in effect Wednesday in Cook Inlet near Anchorage and in the waters near Valdez for east to northeast winds up to 40 knots. We see ridging across central Alaska with troughing out in the Gulf of Alaska. That's creating a northerly flow with cool temperatures in the 20s and 30s. And just a very quick check of Canada. The Arctic regions are cool, and we're starting to see below zero temperatures. I don't think we've quite seen that yet, except up at Eureka. So things are cooling down, and we have a high-pressure area that I forgot to mark. In the Canadian prairies, we've got westerly flow behind this frontal system in Manitoba and ridging across Quebec. Some very cool temperatures the Gaspé Peninsula and the St. Lawrence River east of Quebec City are under rainfall warnings for later this week, Friday and Saturday. They're expecting a very heavy storm coming in in a few days with strong northeast winds. And evaluating the upper level conditions with an eye towards the forecast, we see a strong jet moving from Montana into North Texas this evening. This is a channel jet, Jet Max is kind of elongated from DFW into eastern Colorado. That's sitting right over this Bear Clinic zone between the very cold trough in the north central U.S. and the warmer atmosphere over the desert southwest. And there it is on the cross sections, the frontal surface running about like that. That's going to be the leading edge. That's out there in the Davis Mountains of West Texas and the polar front jet sitting further north across Wyoming and Colorado. This very strong jet will dig into the base of the long wave trough and we'll see very strong dynamics rolling out into Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, and those rain chances will go up. The second trough arrives across the northern plains. This will have a more northerly focus, but this will have an effect on the Midwest, Iowa around Thursday and the rest of the Midwest around Friday. There's the tail end trough. Then we see this ridging start to move in over the weekend, starting with the Western states and moving into the Central Plains for Sunday. Then we open up more very strong Pacific flow into the Northern Plains. We'll see a continued stormy pattern into the Midwest and a succession of even deeper digging systems towards the end of next week. Let's take a look at the forecast highs for today. Very cold there in the central Rockies. This will gradually shift out into the plains for Wednesday and Thursday. We already get some recovery. Another blast of cold air for Friday in the Dakotas. That will move mostly into the Great Lakes. Pretty mild for Sunday. Then for tonight, the overnight lows quite cold in the high plains and the Rockies. Down to 15 at Alamosa, 22 at Denver and 17 at Cheyenne. For tomorrow night, looking like this, 20s throughout the High Plains, North Platte all the way down to Amarillo, and another cold night for Thursday night in the higher plains, 30s across the lower elevations. For this weekend, pretty cold up north, moving quickly into the Great Lakes, and for Monday, a little bit warmer. 
Precip chances for tonight focusing near that frontal system, pushing out into the mid-Mississippi River Valley for tonight and tomorrow as those upper dynamics arrive from Dallas. That system will gradually lift into the northeastern U.S. later this week, and then we turn our sights to the Pacific Northwest as that storm track begins to open up. And let us put the maps into motion. Plunging cold front very far south, all the way into Old Mexico. There's that thermal trough across the central plains. That will continue through tomorrow. And those north winds continue all the way into Texas, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Here's our next upstream system. Meanwhile, plenty of rain out there in the southeastern U.S. Gradually that moves into the northeastern U.S. for Thursday. This is going to be a somewhat dry front in the northern plains on Thursday. We'll see this frontal system start to develop in Texas over the weekend, and that will head out into the Gulf and produce some stormy weather down there. Little reinforcing push of cold air Sunday into Texas. Here's our next upstream system. The main thrust on that will be into the Great Lakes, but some of that will come down into the Great Plains but looks a little bit lackluster. Then we look at our next system for midweek next week. There it is in Oregon, crossing the Rockies, and this one looks a little bit more powerful. So by the 234 hour point, the 540 decameter thickness line coming into Kansas with plenty of rain along that front and another blue norther moving through Texas. And that concludes this episode of Forecast Lab. Remember, if you want to learn how to forecast, head to weathergraphics.com. That is my own website, and that's where I have my various books on forecasting available. So check that out, and that helps support this program. We'll see you all back here on Friday for another edition of the show. Take care, and we will see you then. Bye-bye.